Hello, and welcome to the Tiny Human Knits podcast, my podcast about knitting, sewing, cross-stitch, crochet, pretty much anything that requires fiber, really. Um, my name is Laura, and you can find me as Tiny Human Knits on Ravelry and Instagram, and I have an Etsy shop with the same name. Um, pretty much if you can't find someone with that name on a social media platform, I probably don't have it. Um, just to make it easier to find me across the board. Um, I am coming to you from high level Alberta, Canada, up north with, uh, I live with my husband and our pet rabbit, Oscar, who has been in this room the last two episodes, but he has been evicted. He is not allowed to be in here anymore because, um, as you might have noticed, I actually got around to painting. Uh, it's no longer a multicolored green and yellow room. Um, I just painted it a nice neutral gray. And I think it's actually going to be the color that most of my house is going to be in once I get a chance to paint the rest of the house because it's going to need a ton of paint. It's a huge house. Um, but so since I painted, he has discovered that he loves to chew on the corners of the walls. So, um, got one corner that comes out and he's all chewed it. And so he's not allowed in here anymore. <laughs> and he's actually been evicted to his room for most of the time because he's been chewing the corners everywhere. Um, and I actually just want to say a big thank you to anyone who's watched any of my previous videos. Um, any of them, I've got two. Um, but anyone who watches, who comes back, um, I've received so many beautiful comments from people being so supportive and it's just, it's been really awesome. I'm really enjoying myself. Um, and I also want to say that I'm super jealous of my friend Elise who's going to the Edmonton Fiber Frolic today. And I just, it figures, I lived in Edmonton for three years, and of course the year I move away is the year that they start their own fiber festival. Like, thanks guys. Anyway, I might get her to do some, uh, some long distance shopping for me, just because I really want something from a fiber festival. I haven't had anything yet. Um, and uh, so I'm trying to do this pretty quick. Uh, I've got a wedding to go to later today. Um, I mean, I have a couple hours, so I should be fine, but... My sister-in-law is getting married, um, it's going to be an outdoor wedding and it's beautiful today. It's pretty windy, but I'm hoping it dies down before the actual ceremony, but I think it's going to be beautiful. Um, and that is why I'm wearing like a little bit fancier outfit. Um, but I will start on what I'm wearing knit-wise. This is my Bendiero shawl, and again I forgot to write down the designer's name. Um, I'll put it in on the screen here. Um, I made this in... February, I think, and it's beautiful shape. It's sort of reminiscent of a crescent shape, which is my favorite type of shawl shape. I like a, a long crescent, um, and uh, I just, I love the shape of it. I've actually made this twice. I made one for me, and then I made one for my cousin as well, um, and mine is made out of uh, the yellow here, which is actually the same yellow, even though it looks totally different. Um, that is a Louette Gems Fingering, uh, and that is in the straw colorway. And that is the label for that. And then the beautiful speckled, um, beigey tan color is a skein of yarn that I actually got in a fiber share package. It was sent to me by a lovely lady in Calgary. She spoiled the ever-living crap out of me. She sent me such a beautiful package. And, um, that is, uh... Polka Dot Creek in their classic sock, and that is in the sand colorway. That's the label there. And actually, the nice thing about this is this is an Alberta dyer, and I love the yarn so much. If I ever get a chance to, I'm definitely going to buy some more from her because it's beautiful. And I love speckles, and I need more speckles in my life. I actually think this is, this is the only skin of yarn I've ever had that was speckled. So, hopefully soon. Um... So yeah, that is what I'm wearing, and it's a little bit chilly in here, so I'm going to probably keep this on the whole time. Um, I've got two finished objects today, actually. Um, the first one is my pair of Hermione's Everyday Socks. And this is knit in the Red Sock Blue Sock yarn that I bought at River City Yarns uh, earlier this year. And... It's beautiful. I love it. I love the speckles here. I'm definitely doing more speckled toes in the future. Just because they're beautiful. Um, these were made for my cousin as well. She purchased the yarn. There's two. And 
And uh, this is a pattern, it's a very, very popular pattern by uh, Erica Luter. And I love it. These are the most comfortable socks. I have my own pair and I am I love wearing them. I really need to deep fur them though because my bunny sheds like nobody's business and gets all stuck on the socks. So now that I've shown those as finished objects, I can finally give them to my cousin and I'll be seeing her today before we go to the wedding. So I can give those to her for sure. My second finished object is actually for the bride. Um, she ordered the sweater and I finished it yesterday. I was so desperate to finish it. And it was the sweater that never ends because it's a two by one rib pretty much the whole way and it takes forever. Um, but that is the Bedford sweater. And I'm actually, it's still slightly down, but I'm gonna try to show it. It's the Bedford sweater by Michelle Wong. And it's huge. I did that on purpose though, it's oversized. And it's made out of Barocco Ultra Alpaca in the Cerulean Mix colorway. And I actually blocked it really aggressively because as it is a two by one rib, it was, it had cinched up quite a bit. So I just, after I, I washed it, I stretched it out. Because it's supposed to be super oversized and I didn't want it to look like awkwardly boxy. So yeah, over the last two weeks I knit the sleeves, which was super fast because it's just stock in it. So that was easy. And finally got around to attaching it, but yeah, I'm, but we'll be giving it to her today just because I don't have anything else I can give her, so at least I'll be able to give her something for her wedding. And it smells so nice. I love the woolly smell. Does anyone else like the woolly, like, wet wool smell? I know it smells kind of weird, but I like it. And I did have a whole thing left over, so I'll be able to make a hat or a pair of mittens or something out of it as well. Um, I might not make it for myself because it's not really, I don't wear a lot of blues. Um, but I think if I make a pair of mittens, I have, uh, someone who has been dying over this color. She calls it a mermaid colorway. So I might make her a pair of mittens. But it's a secret, I'm not gonna tell. So, those are my two finished objects. And, uh, I am very glad to have this off the needles because I was getting mighty sick of it. I know that's bad to say, but... <clears throat> I was getting sick of it. All right, and now I've moved on to my works in progress. I actually only have one right now because I finished that last night and I've been working on other stuff uh, for the shop since then. So I only have one work in progress and I have a hoe for that. Part of my middle noises. And that is just a pair of vanilla socks. And I've made a pair of socks with this exact same yarn before, so you might have seen it on my Instagram for this, but it's just a pair of vanilla socks. And this is just a cheap Patton's Croy sock. I've been calling these my, um, my school uniform socks because I don't know why, but it reminds me of a school uniform. Just the colors and the thick stripes. I love this yarn though. It's, I, I really enjoy it. I actually ordered some more. I finally got paid, so I went a little bit sock yarn crazy. When I was ordering, I might have ordered enough for like 12 pairs of socks, but it's all um, the uh, commercial sock, so it wasn't too expensive. This is the second sock. Um, I'm, I think I'm just two inches away from being able to do the increases for the heel. Um, it's just a basic toe up, 56 stitches, and I just do a gusset and a heel turn for the heel and then I just I use one one ball I split it up into 25 grams and then I use uh, just an extra flax color for the heel and then I just knit as much as I can and I actually think I got these to be pretty darn close but with the patterns if you split it exactly in half you can usually get pretty um, even socks like matching socks uh, so that's just what I did. Um, so they're not terribly long, but at the moment, because it's so hot here right now, I don't want them to be terribly long. Um, and then I just knit to however I want before the, um, before the cuff, and I do a one by one twisted rib, because it's the neatest. And then just a, uh, surprisingly stretchy bind off. Pretty basic. So that's my work in progress, and I'm keeping that in my feathery friends bag that I made 
Um, I kept this one. I was meant to put it in the shop, but I kept it because my corners are so crooked. Um, I don't know what I was doing when I was making this one, but even when it sits down, it's like, yeah. So I get to keep that. It's mine. Um, and I have another almost work in progress. I have a future knitting. Um, this is a request by my coworker. She loves handmade stuff. She's a really big supporter of handmaids and she orders a lot of hand stitched uh, beaded jewelry and um, like mucklucks and you know she has a cell phone holder that's hand beaded and I really appreciate when people appreciate handmaids and how much time and, and effort goes into it and I really like that about her. Um, she wanted a cardigan so I went on Ravelry and I showed her a bunch of patterns and we picked, um, it's called the Stranger Cardigan, and it's a Brooklyn Tweed pattern. I feel like I do that on purpose. I only show people Brooklyn Tweed patterns because I'm like, oh, it's the best one. And then if they pick it, it makes me happy. So it's just in black and white, so you'll be able to see. So that's what it looks like. Um, I'm not even going to attempt to say the designer's name because I will butcher it terribly. But... I'll put it on the screen. Um, the nicest thing about this pattern is it's reversible in a way where you can wear it right side up or upside down and that just changes whether it looks like looks like a shawl collar just once on top or the other way around. And I really like that. It makes it a little bit more versatile. So I'll be starting that probably tomorrow. I'm going to be gate um doing a gauge swatch for it and I'm using just this is a pretty inexpensive wool um, because she's obsessed with the color purple everything she has is purple it's amazing um, but I'm just gonna be using this premier yarns and this purple this was just from from my stash uh, again it's from when I worked at Michaels and she's pretty sensitive to wool and we can't really afford to purchase wool for everything she's requested she's requested like six six different items um, so I'm just gonna be making it out of this because it's soft. I've made a sweater out of this before and it's incredibly comfortable and it's a uh, anti-pilling so it's not gonna pill. Um, but for for an acrylic it's really soft. And I like the color and this way I'm not just having it sit in my stash because I don't wear purple so I wouldn't be making anything for myself. Um, so the fact that I can use it for someone and for someone who appreciates it that much I'm really looking forward to it and I definitely have enough. I've got six of these. Pretty sure I have enough. I should have. Um, so yeah, that's a future knitting project. I have a ton of future knitting projects that I need to do. Um, sweaters for other people, sweaters for myself. I'm kind of thinking of starting Christmas presents here in a bit um, because I always tell myself every year I'm not going to be making Christmas presents for anyone, um, but I know that's a lie. So I figure if I'm going to, if I know I'm lying about it, I should just start now and then I can get a head start on it. Um, yes. So that is that, and I have one acquisition this week. Um, I feel like I should have had more, but our postal system is so crazy slow. I've, yeah, it takes forever for anything to get here because we're so out of the city that, ugh. Anyway, um, I got sent something in the mail by the lovely Rosie of the uh, Pixel Atlantis podcast and Etsy shop. Um, Rosie and I have been playing uh, mail tag for the past couple months. Um, last year, when there was the Get Your Yarn Wish Granted tag on Instagram, she had made a wish for more soft yarn, and I granted her wish and sent her some Heritage Prints uh, sock yarn that I had in my stash. And uh, that's how I found out about her. So I checked her out, and she has an Etsy shop, and some of her, she dyes yarn. And her yarn is so beautiful. Um, I actually uh, ended up ordering some last year on uh, our one year anniversary. We were actually at dinner in the restaurant. I had ordered a skein of yarn and it was a Christmas colorway and I need to make some socks out of that. But I ordered yarn from her and she sent it over and then earlier this year I had a giveaway on my Instagram page and uh, she won that so I sent her a package so it keeps going back and forth and then after she got the package, she asked if it would be alright if she sent me something, and I was like, absolutely, anything you'd send me would be awesome. Um, so I got this in the mail on Wednesday, and uh, 
unfortunately, the box that she had sent uh, everything in had been broken or torn into or something in the mail and one of the bags that held all of her hand dyed yarn wasn't in there when I got it. Which is incredibly unfortunate because her hand dyed yarn is so beautiful and... But, you know, stuff happens. But she did send me this skein of Stylecraft Head Over Heels yarn, which is such a cute label. But look at this. It is so beautiful. This is the Sugarloaf colorway. And I am so excited by this. It is so springy and bright. And when I got it, my husband asked if I was going to be making socks for him out of this. Maybe. I might do. But I really, it's really special because it's from Rosie and I'm thinking I'll probably make a pair of socks for myself before I make anything for him. Um, but there's so much in here, it's 100 grams. And uh, because I don't make very tall socks, I might even be able to make two pairs of socks if I get a nice contrast. Because there's so many colors in here, I mean look at that. So many different colors I could do contrast with. I love it. It's so pretty. Um, she also included a huge bag of candy. Um, sorry for the crinkling, but this is all that's left. Um, there was a lot more in here when I first got it. There's some licorice candy. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Anytime I get candy, my husband devours it. because. So she sent me a big bag of Skittles. And Skittles from uh, England and... Or the UK. Sorry, she's in Scotland. Um, are way better than here. I feel like they're fresher tasting and for candy I know that's ridiculous but you know how it is um so yeah that's the only acquisition I have um in my hands as I said I ordered a bunch of yarn I ordered from hotyarns.com a couple opal balls of yarn um and I ordered from Yarn Canada I ordered a bunch of patents and uh Something else I can't even remember. Then I also ordered from Knit Picks. Um, that one wasn't just for me though, that was for my coworker because she ordered another sweater and a scarf. So I needed to get yarn for that specifically and it was on sale. It was their stroll yarn. So justified. Um, I feel like I might have made a purchase from somewhere else as well. I can't even remember. I'm going to be getting all these packages being like, I don't know what's in it. Uh, but yeah, um, but yeah, that's all I have for acquisitions, and uh, I'll just move on to a bit of blather now. Um, the last two weeks have been incredibly busy. I've been working on that sweater, working on stuff for the shop. Um, I'm hoping to have an update uh, mid, middle of next week, I hope, at the latest Friday. I'm trying to get as much stuff as I can done. Um, but I spent the last two weeks painting this room, um, just took... The better part of a day. Um, we also planted our garden in our incredibly clay filled dirt patch. Um, I'm still not convinced anything will grow out of it. Uh, my mom reassures me that it will but I don't know. I've never planted a garden before by myself. Um, neither has my husband and we had a bunch of like fertilizer manure and stuff that we added to it but I'm still it's been dry. I don't know if anything's gonna grow. <laughs> so I'll update you on that but we planted everything. We planted um, we calculated it's a 91 meters of potatoes, uh, like 49 meters of beans and peas and carrots and corn and sunflowers and pumpkins, um, ev everything. We had so much room. We were just like dumping seeds wherever we could because we had so much. <laughs> but that's what we spent a better part of a day doing as well. Um, also, I don't know if anyone, uh, whoever follows me on Instagram, if you saw my Instagram story at my work, um, I work for the seasonal department of the Alberta Wildfire Association. Um, so it's just like, I'm, I'm just, uh, admin, I'm not doing any of the f actual firefighting, but it's, um, the program that puts out fires in the summer. Um, which happened a lot, people don't realize it, but there's a lot more fires than you'd ever hear about. Um, but anyway, they had accidentally overfilled one of their helicopters with too much fuel at one point, um, just as a math error. Um, so they needed to burn off some of the fuel before they'd be able to be, um, have their whole crew on, on a helicopter. So 
uh, one day this week, uh, one of the supervisors came in and asked me if I wanted to go on a helicopter ride, and I was like, of course I do. So me and uh, my coworker got to go on a helicopter ride for no reason. It's just, we weren't busy. They had to burn fuel. They asked if we wanted to go, and it was awesome. Um, I don't think I've ever been on a helicopter before. I've been on a Cessna plane, but that's not really the same thing. It was really fun, though. Um, it was very windy, so it was a bit, bit, um, dippy. But I'm very proud of myself. I didn't get sick. Um, neither did my coworker. None of us got sick. It was pretty great. Um, what else happened this week? Uh, just being busy. Work has still been pretty slow because it's been raining a little bit. Not too much, but enough to, to stop any fires. Um, yeah, I've been trying to fill up my shop. I think that might be it. Yeah, I think that's everything. So I hope everyone in the Edmonton area enjoys the, the Fiber Festival. I'm very jealous of you all. Very, very jealous of you all. Um, yeah. So I think I'm going to go straighten my hair, touch up for the wedding, and then we'll head out, probably. Um, yeah, I hope everyone has a good day, good weekend. What Saturday? Um, yeah, I hope everyone has a good time. Um, so yeah, follow me on Ravelry on uh, Instagram. Uh, join the Ravelry group. I opened it a couple weeks ago. It's the Tiny Human Knits podcast on the groups tab. Um, check me out on Etsy. You might find something you like. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go and party hard at a wedding. So yeah, hope everyone has a good day. Bye.